It wasn't until 1988 that table tennis became a formal Olympic sport, but it quickly established itself as one of the most popular events at subsequent games. At the 2000 Sydney Olympics, tickets for the table tennis competitions were the fourth most sought after. Something that's little known is that the International Table Tennis Federation passed a resolution allowing it to become part of the Olympics as early as 1937. However, the president of the IWTF, the overcautious Ivor Montague, refused to endorse the decision for fear that table tennis would fail to gain general acceptance. For historical reasons, the Chinese regard table tennis as their national sport. For several decades, the mentality of China against the rest of the world and the rest of the world against China existed in table tennis circles. Moreover, China has always had considerably more table tennis players than any other country. China's first world champion in any sport was Rong Guotuan, who won at the 25th World Table Tennis Championships in 1959. In 1971, ping-pong diplomacy transformed the international geopolitical situation. It's an achievement that no other sport can boast. In 2007, Chuck Hui, curator of the Table Tennis Museum in Lausanne, Switzerland, received a very special postcard. It had originally been sent by a European from Tianjin in China to Brussels, capital of Belgium, on January the 22nd, 1902. The few lines written on it testify to the popularity of table tennis in Tianjin at that time. A painting, produced around the same time, called Beauties, depicts an early encounter between the Chinese and table tennis. An accompanying poem reads, The venal breezes brush beside you, who are on two sides of the net. With light bat in hand, you send the bouncing star back and forth. Several countries lay claim to being the origin of some form of ping-pong or table tennis. In its modern form, table tennis was played as an after-dinner amusement in England in the 19th century, and subsequently it spread to other European countries. It was the appearance of celluloid balls that marked the emergence of table tennis as an independent sport and no longer a mini version of tennis. Previously, the balls had been made of champagne corks, but these scarcely bounced, while solid rubber balls were too lively to be dealt with effectively. In the mid-19th century, a wealthy American businessman offered a $10,000 prize to encourage the search for a new material to replace ivory and billiard balls. Attracted by the reward, an American called Hyatt invented celluloid. In 1900, a Briton named Gibb discovered some celluloid balls in a toy shop in America. The light, thin-shelled balls soon swept Britain. In the first manned flight across the Atlantic back in 1931, 
The pilot, Henry T. Merrill, stuffed his plane, including both wings, with 41,000 table tennis balls in the belief that they would help him float in the event that he was forced down over water. The earliest table tennis bats were just small tennis rackets. Eventually, parchment replaced the strings. But even when short-handed wooden bats appeared with a cork and abrasive paper covering, table tennis still remained nothing more than an after-dinner amusement. It was only after the introduction of pimpled rubber bats that table tennis reached the level of a competitive sport. The Hungarian player, Roland Jacobi, won the first world championships held in London in 1927. This marked the start of a period of European dominance of the sport. The most outstanding players of the era were both Hungarians, Viktor Barna in the men's game and Maria Metanyansky in the women's. At the 19th World Table Tennis Championships held in Mumbai in 1952, Japanese player Hiroji Sato used a brand new 7 mm thick sponge rubber bat. With his fierce forehand long drive, he overcame the solid European chopping defense and won the first men's singles world championship title for Asia. The emergence of the sponge rubber bat added a new dimension to modern table tennis. Asian players in particular, such as Ogimura Ichiro, Zhuang Sudong, and Xu Yansheng, learned to exploit the advantages of the new type of bat. Various types of rubber surfaces were applied to the sponge. There were protruding dimples, intruding dimples, long dimples, and anti-spin rubber. The variety of choices allowed Chinese players such as Zhang Xilin, Liang Geliang, and Gu Xing Ai to realize their full potential. A strong smash, played using a handshake grip, can send the ball traveling as fast as 47 meters a second. The impact between bat and ball is only brief, lasting one one thousandth of a second. Yet this is long enough to create deformation as the rubber and then the sponge consecutively absorb the kinetic energy of the impact. When this deformation reaches a maximum, they begin to restore themselves to their normal shape. The absorbed energy is released and sends the ball flying back very fast. In this process, the deformation in the hard part of the bat and the ball are almost imperceptible. No other sport is as closely associated with spin as is table tennis. Producing various forms of spin is a fundamental skill. At the maximum, a ball can spin 150 times a second. The spin is generated by applying a force to the ball that is not directed at its center of gravity. The vertical impact force moves the ball horizontally, while the tangential friction spins it. What the bat imparts to the ball is a combination of impact force and friction. Without the friction between ball and bat, the ball wouldn't spin. When the player hits the ball, the static friction in the tangential direction of the swing generates asymmetrical deformation in the sponge layer. Thus, the point of action of the force deviates and moves away from the center of the ball, making the ball spin around its horizontal or vertical axis. 
The faster the swing, the greater the friction factor between bat and ball. While the thinner the friction surface is, the faster the ball spins. Both the sticky, inward pimpled rubber and the fine texture on the pimples of pimple out rubber aim at improving the ability to turn the ball. In the late 1950s, the Japanese team swept the Europeans aside by using a topspin loop produced by inward pimpled rubber. At the 36th World Table Tennis Championships in 1981, Chinese player Tsai Chunhua beat Gregory of Hungary in the final. At the crucial point, with the match tied at 15 all in the final set, Tsai won five successive points by delivering five serves, all with different spin. When a top spin ball lands on the table, the spin around the horizontal axis exerts a backward horizontal force on the table, and the reaction force against the friction gives the ball forward acceleration. So, a top spin ball demonstrates great momentum when it bounces, and its angle of reflection is wider than that of the incidence. By contrast, a backspin ball, after landing on the table, gets backward acceleration from the spin, demonstrating a weak momentum when bouncing, and its angle of reflection is narrower than that of the incidence. When a backspin ball flies slowly with an excessively strong spin, it can even bounce backwards. When it reaches the bat, a topspin ball climbs up to the help of friction and produces a wide rebound angle, while a backspin one slips down and makes a narrow rebound angle. Naturally, therefore, returning topspin will make the ball fly upwards, while in the case of a backspin, it's liable to head for the net. Many innovations introduced into the bat are aimed at better controlling the spin. Loop-resistant rubber is thick, with short pimples. Smooth surfaced rubber can help reduce the rapid topspin of a loop. Soft and long thin pimples collapse at the instant of impact and send the ball back in its original spin to the opponent. However, the extreme effects of long pimples are too unpredictable and produce a poor visual spectacle. So, in 1999, the ITTF ruled that the ratio between the height and diameter of a pimple could not exceed one to one. A spinning ball can not only produce a specific reaction when it lands on the table or impacts with a bat, it can also alter its trajectory. 
The air circulation above a top spin ball acts in the opposite direction to that of the air resistance, while the air circulation below it acts in the same direction as the air resistance. As a result, the air flow over the top is slower than that below. According to Bernoulli's principle, a downward pressure drag is thus produced, which bends the ball's trajectory downwards. By contrast, a backspin ball rises, while a sidespin ball turns to the left or to the right. These mid-air turns by spinning table tennis balls are produced by the Magnus effect, just like banana kicks in football. It's often said that what is sensed is difficult to understand well, and only what is understood can be properly sensed. So only with a knowledge of mechanics are table tennis players in a position to deal with spinning balls better. To create more tricky spins, ping-pong players once applied a variety of glues to their paddles during competition. This was eventually banned for safety reasons. However, the evolution of table tennis as a competitive sport has been greatly affected by changes in the size of the ball. Stay with us for the science behind the lightning quick moves in table tennis. At the 35th World Table Tennis Championships, held in Pyongyang in 1979, the Hungarians regained the men's team title after a gap of 27 years. The secret to their unexpected success was something called Speed Blue. It was discovered by chance by a player named Tibor Klamper, who found that re-gluing the sponge increased the elasticity of the bat and so added speed and spin to the ball. This secret weapon was soon adopted by players all over the world. The key to the speed blue effect lies in the rapid penetration of the organic solvent into the sponge layer. It inflates the microporous structure of the sponge layer, thickening it bit by between 3 and 10 percent. The thickening increases the storage modulus by up to 30 percent and reduces its loss modulus considerably, with the result that the bat is more elastic when it strikes the ball. The sound of the sound is very clear, its 
可以追溯到气汛现象和水锤效应。However, the effects of the speed glue only last for a couple of hours, making it necessary for players to speed glue their bats several times during competitions. To facilitate this, major table tennis venues have established special speed glue rooms, where the unpleasant smell from the process can be isolated. It wasn't long before the negative effects of speed glue were attracting attention. The International Table Tennis Federation responded in early 1995 by announcing the prohibition of organic glues containing halide, benzene rings, and ethane. That same year, at the 43rd World Championships in Tianjin, South Korean player Kim Tae-soon was disqualified for using a prohibited adhesive. In recent years, as cases have continued to be uncovered of speed glue damaging players' health, the table tennis world gradually reached a consensus that all volatile organic compounds would be totally banned as of October 2008. At the 10th World Championships, held in Prague in 1936, one match in the men's team championship was an epic affair in which Austria and Romania fought for 31 hours. The match was actually played over three days. In another match, the Polish player Olozzi Ehrlich and Romanian player Panat Farkas competed for one hour and 20 minutes for a single point. A match between Romania and France failed to reach a conclusion after six and a half hours and was finally decided by the toss of a coin. To eliminate such tedious marathons, the ITTF imposed time limits on competitions. At the 11th World Championships in 1937, U.S. player Ruth Ahrens and Austrian player Trudy Pritzi were adjudged to have violated this rule when their final exceeded the time limit of one hour, 45 minutes. As a consequence, the women's title was declared void. The issue was only redressed in 2001 when the pair were declared joint champions. By that time, 64 years later, table tennis was suffering from the opposite problem. Dominated by forehand smashes, high-speed shots, cunning serves, and rapid loop drives, matches were over all too quickly. For the spectators, the spectacle was no less tedious than the epic battles of the past had been. In 1999, at the seminar in Copenhagen, the ITTF invited contributions to a discussion on how to make table tennis more appealing. In other words, neither too slow, as in the past, nor over too quickly, as was the modern problem. With the dawning of the new century, the ITTF introduced a series of bold reforms. The 38mm balls were replaced by 40mm ones. The introduction of the bigger balls aimed at reducing the speed of flight and spin. There had been proposals to increase the size of the table and raise the height of the net, but the bigger ball was considered a more effective alternative. 
The 40 millimeter balls represented a 16.6% increase in volume and a 10.8% increase in surface area. This meant greater air resistance was acting on the ball and consequently reduced its speed by 13%. The 2 mm growth in diameter increased the ball's weight from 2.5 grams to 2.72 grams. This increased the moment of inertia and reduced the spin by 21%. Since the weight of a ball lies in the 0.4 mm thick shell, which lies at a distance from its center of gravity, the spin is acutely affected by a change in size. Besides, since the percentage increase in weight was less than that of the volume, the balls were comparatively softer and less elastic. The big balls made their debut at the 46th World Championships in Osaka in 2001, where there was a noticeable increase in the rate of successful return of serve and in the length of rallies. Another advantage was that the balls were more clearly visible. Coming up, the ITTF half the conventional 21-point set scoring system in table tennis to an 11-point set game. The idea is to encourage more players to compete. And on the technology front, new innovations create new possibilities, making the game more fascinating and enjoyable, both for players and fans. The 47th World Table Tennis Championships in Paris in 2003 were a milestone in the sport's history. The Austrian player Werner Schlager had commented to reporters beforehand that the Chinese team can beat their rivals as easily as blowing out a candle. Yet the Chinese were defeated and Schlager himself went on to win the men's singles title. 
获得了男子单打冠军。The leading players of the day, Wagner, Persson, Gatien, and Chuan Chi Guan, were all beaten. This dramatic outcome was closely associated with the adoption of a new scoring system. In 2001, the ITTF had abolished the old scoring system of 21 points to a set and made it 11 points instead. It was a major innovation that was based on sound mathematical principles. If we calculate the frequency that a coin comes up heads or tails when tossed, we find that the greater the number of tosses, the closer the result approaches probability. This is the law of large numbers. In table tennis, top players obviously enjoy a greater possibility of victory, and this is made more probable the higher the number of points there are to play for. Compared with the 21-point scoring system, the 11-point system introduces a greater possibility of chance factors having an influence on the game, such as balls catching the table's edge or the top of the net, and so on. A coach of the German national team showed that statistically the chance of the score reaching 20 all is 7.1% under the 21 point scoring system, while that of 10 all is 16% under the 11 point scoring system. Although playing seven sets instead of five can produce a certain equilibrium, the minimum number of points needed for victory at 44 compared to 63 is still significantly less. But it accords with the ITTF's aim, which is to reduce the certainty of victory for top players and thus introduce greater uncertainty into competitions, so that more players are encouraged to take part. After all, the appeal of table tennis lies in the close rivalry between countries and the enthusiasm of ordinary participants all over the world. One result of the reforms involving the use of a bigger ball and the introduction of the 11-point scoring system was the appearance of the no-hiding serve. It was also a natural development from the 1984 rule that a bat must have a black and a red side so that everything was visible and nothing should block the sight of the ball within the triangle formed by the ball and the two net pillars. The reform also remedied the situation in which matches had become a battle of serves. The production of a table tennis ball consists of over 30 steps. Its weight, volume, roundness, hardness, and elasticity all have to meet strict standards. China alone produces more than 300 million table tennis balls a year. The sponge layer on the bat is made of expanded rubber 
or foam, which may not exceed 0.4 millimeters in thickness. On top of this is a layer of rubber with either pimples or dimples for attacking and defensive purposes, respectively. 85% of the blade is made of natural wood with from 5 to 7 carbon layers. The use of glass fiber, aramid fiber and carbon fiber have improved the bat's hardness and elasticity and enhanced its sweet spot. As for the tables, standards have been established for their evenness of elasticity, surface friction and surface color. Tiny microphones are installed in them to convey the sound of the ball bouncing and being hit to every corner of the auditorium. A recent invention is the four-wheel drive table tennis robot that acts as a training partner. The robot is controlled by a computer program and can produce nearly a hundred kinds of serves with varying speeds, spins, landing spots and loops. It seems that every year some new invention comes out representing another advance in table tennis technology. There are said to be more than 40 million people worldwide who regularly play some sort of game with a small ball that makes a ping-pong sound. The International Table Tennis Federation now has more than 170 member countries. The simple and economical equipment, the variation of fast and slow movement, the wide appeal, these are the reasons why table tennis has become a global sport and the biggest sport in China. From brick and cement tables in rural schools to the pinnacle of the Olympic medals podium, Table tennis is a sport for all that promises the chance of international glory.